The glorious times of the Romans and Gauls have passed long time ago, but it seems that the secret of the magic potion got to the Druids from one small island in the Pacific Ocean, because it is difficult to explain where the Samoan fighters have got such vicious power and dynamite in their strikes. Mark Hunt, Ray Sefo, David Tua, and our today's hero, Siala Mo Siliga, who was nicknamed Mighty Moor for the killer cannons in his hand, especially the right overhand. All of these fighters are similar in their own way. They are all little bit fattish man with incredibly powerful strikes. So perhaps they also bathed in the potion in their childhood. And today's story will be devoted to the adventures of Mighty Mo in K1. And if it goes well for you, and not this video about Vandalay Silva, it will receive its sequel as more foes in MMA. So I urge everyone interested not to stand aside and to indicate their position with a like or a comment. He made his K1 debut in 2004 with a knockout of the Japanese Hiroko Hori, after which he was included in the list of 8 fighters taking part in the Las Vegas Grand Prix. At the first stage, Mighty had to face the champion of America and the world in kickboxing, Carter Williams, who in the very first second was already on the floor. To be honest, this hasn't affected him much. Carter was shooting low kicks and sealing in the clinch, while Moore was aiming his hoe which he intended to get himself a ticket to the semi-finals with. Mighty threw cannon strikes on Carter's strict, but so far they were only passing by, and Williams was relatively safe. Before the third round, Moore drank a magic potion and showed that the hippos also have grace, throwing out a crazy left strike on a gallop, after which he mercilessly dealt with his opponent throwing that overhand and knocking him out. So the first stage was passed, and Moore went further down the grid. In the semi-finals, Mighty hit Dewey Cooper, nicknamed Black Cobra, who bicycled all three rounds perfectly and won with his jabs and low kicks. Mort tried to catch up and cover the Cobra with his shovel, but he couldn't. Dewey managed his game plan and showed great reaction and defense in this game. Aside from the cannon strike, Mort couldn't offer anything more, so this cycling tactics worked well against him. Four months after his first loss, Mighty took part in the Las Vegas Grand Prix again, and at the first stage, he got the Belarusian fighter Sergei Gur, who was a sparring partner of Alexei Ignatiev, as well as a two-time Italian kickboxing champion and a world Thai boxing champion. In the very first seconds, Sergei missed the flash and ended up on the canvas, but then got up and responded with a high kick, which regularly flew into the head of the Simone Rhino, but at the same time, it seemed that he simply didn't feel these blows. Sergei invested in literally every punch, but he couldn't break through Mo's Samoan defense. At the same time, in the second round, Mighty's notorious overhand flew into his head, which shook well, but didn't knock out the Belarusian out of the game. The fight went the entire distance, and Sergei lost by unanimous decision, allowing Mo to go to the semi-finals of the knockout tournament. In the second stage, Mighty faced Scott Light, Chuck Liddell's teammate and sparring partner who decided to break Moe's leg with his low kicks, and at first Mighty didn't have time to counterattack these blows, but then adapted, aimed the cannon at the target and fired one shot. What the hell was that? Vicious hit from Mighty, and Scott is on the canvas. Surprisingly, he even found the strength to get back on his feet though it wasn't worth continuing the fight, and the referee stopped it. The girls are just delighted with such a knockout, and Moore becomes the finalist of the Grand Prix tournament. To finish the Grand Prix as a champion, Mighty had to beat one more fighter, who by that time had no defeats with six victories. Belgian Brett Wallace, who was called the Soft Giant, was the Samoan's final frontier. A rather slow start and shoot out from the side of Mo, who usually had only one plan for the battle, which was to cover the opponent with an overhand, and the trick was done. This Samoan bombs flew over the head of Wallace, and something did land at the target, but the Belgian held on courageously and wasn't afraid to take an open battle. But his head couldn't deal with Mighty's overhand, who caught the opponent on an own goal attack and made another tough finish in his style. 
So from the second time, Mighty Moore became the champion of the Las Vegas Grand Prix and confirmed the status of the most dangerous K1 puncher who can always end the bout with just one blow. A month after his triumph, Samoan Obelix went to Tokyo to fight the eternal gatekeeper Big Daddy Gary Goodridge, who fought constantly, everywhere and a lot. And at that time he had 6 defeats and 3 victories and one of them was over Mike Bernardo. Mighty started a scouting with a jab and then launched a couple of brutal overhands that went right into Gary's head, but Daddy swallowed these splashes and continued to fight. As if nothing had happened, he gathered all Mighty's jabs with his face and the first knockdown was just around the corner. Then the second one was drawn there, but Daddy got up again and wasn't going to give up without a fight. Though soon he still had to. After the third knockdown, the referee with a clear conscience stopped the action and awarded the victory to Mighty Moore, who again finished the fight ahead of the time in the first round. After finishing Gary, Mighty signed up for a very strange but rather interesting fight. His opponent was Thai K.O. Clyde Kayan Norsing, who was gaining fame and before the fight with Mo, rolled out a draw with Mike Bernardo and beat Alexei Ignashev. The oddity of this fight was that the difference in the weight between the fighters was 30 kilos in favours of more. And I don't think it's worth saying how this all could end for the toy. <laughs> Keoklai, realising what danger more carries for him, expectedly worked from a long distance and constantly moved on his feet so that one of the Samoan guns wouldn't catch him by surprise and sank him to an intensive care. Mighty couldn't catch up with the nimble Tai and all his blows flew off the target and Keoklai perfectly managed to achieve his plan for the battle and waited for the right moment. He flew into Mighty's head with a high kick and knocked the giant off his feet, having issued not only a bright but also an unexpected knockout. I do not think that before the fight there was someone who betted on the victory of the tie ahead of the time. And in this fight he should have relied only on his high speed bike, so Mighty knew not only how to design bright finishes but also to become a supporting hero flying off to Nirvana no less beautifully. After recovering from this upset, Mighty revenged by beating Remy Bonyaski with a split decision and after him signed up for a fight with a pro boxer and IBF world champion Francois Botter, who at past times managed to fight with many heavyweight legends, Tyson, Klitschko, Lennox and Holyfield, and all of them he successfully lost. In the kickboxing his things were not very good as well. He had 8 fights and lost 6 of them and had victories on Peter Ertz and Jerome Lebana, although he won both times by injury to his opponents. Very first approach and Francois misses most signature strikes, the right overhand, which sends the champion to the canvas, but he finds strength and gets to his feet, though he immediately eats savory left hook from the Samoan. Mighty finds an opportunity and brings the overhand to Botter's head, who falls knocked down on the canvas, but he gets up again and tries to fight, however not for very long. Mighty drops him a third time and the fight is stopped. The Samoan wins a solid victory and confirms his status as a super knockout puncher who shook Botsa three times in 20 minutes and if you look again at what kind of ridiculous power Mok puts into these punches then it really becomes scary for the fighters in front of him. Thank you. Japan. Come in. Drop in the bomb. Mighty Mo. Unfortunately, these blows were his only weapon, and when he hit the real tops, this was not enough to win and such confrontations often didn't work in his favour. So, in the next fight, he lost to Peter Ertz, who in a round and a half dried the Simone's leg with low kicks and knocked him out. Mighty fought with Ertz twice and lost both times by a knockout, so there wasn't much intrigue in this confrontation, in contrast to the meeting with the legendary 3 meter Korean Hong Man Choi, with whom they fought twice in K1 and even met in an MMA fight. 2007 and their first fight in K1. At that time, Choi had 9 victories and 2 defeats, had never been knocked out and also beat Sammy Schultz. 
The most curious thing is that in this fight, the difference in height was as much as 33 centimeters. Mighty tickles the giant with a jab and then throws the famous right overhand with which he could have made the Korean one head lower, but the blow whistles it off target. More repeatedly rushed into the middle distance and launched his signature blow, but so far it only caused the Korean to smile and it seemed to him that he was in control of the fight and was safe. <laughs> The second round, the rocket reached its target and Choi collapsed to the canvas and according to these frames, he thought he was in Disneyland, although it was a knockout, very tough knockout. So a convincing victory for Mighty who broke kind of a record with this knockout. At that time, it was the finish with the biggest difference in height between the fighters. Although this record didn't last long and was broken a couple of months later by Danish karate fighter Nicholas Pettis, who removed another Korean, Kim Yon Hyun, and in this fight the difference was as much as 37 centimeters. Он да просто даже не успевает поворачиваться за своим соперником. Да, и великолепная связка уже надо останавливать. After such a bright victory, Mighty took part in the next Grand Prix tournament, which was held in Hawaii, and the win required passing three opponents in the evening, while he arrived at the tournament as a favorite. The first to face the hot hand of the Samoan was another Korean, Kim Kyon Suk, who at the very beginning of the battle has already felt the heroic might of Mo. In the next episode, Mighty didn't even hit his opponent, but the knockdown was still counted, and by the Korean's look, it seemed that he doubted at all about the correctness of his choice of profession, at least his face told about this. Left on the gallop from Mo, and the Korean is ready, a very quick and bright victory from the Samoan, and he walks further along the grid to the semi-finals, and Kim was recovering a long time after such a hit. On the second stage, Mighty went to the giant Ian Nortier, a fighter who was also at the very dawn of strength and tried to look like Samoan, only he didn't have a cannon strike. In this fight there were a lot of low kicks, especially from Mighty, and not so many killing overhands, although Ian flaunted and strongly asked the Samoan make a show to the audience. First knockdown happened, but Mighty, after such cases, usually didn't stop and tried to develop the advantage as quickly as possible. In this battle, he acted in a similar way, even though Ian was trying to act like Samoan. In the second round, the deal was done. Mighty nipped the opponent into the corner and threw out a couple of deadly blows which cut down even the biggest fish. And this case was not an exception. For Ian, it turned out to be too tough and he flew to the knockout, so Mighty went to the finals of the knockout tournament, where a fighter from Russia, Alexander Pitkunov, was waiting for him. A karate fighter who had beaten Pat Berry twice, and by the time of the fight against Mo, had no defeats with 8 wins and 1 draw. Alexander moved a lot on his feet and tried not to let Mo aim at his head, since we all know how it all could end, and Pitkunov knew about it even better. Very cool spinning kick from Alexander, who dropped a dangerous puncher himself and achieved the first knockdown in his belt. Apparently Alexander decided that this hippo could be knocked down only by a kick to the head, since then the conveyor was followed by high kicks, spinning kicks and even Andy Hook's axe kick, but everything was off target. On the other hand, Mighty acted according to his classics, nipped the opponent in the corner and managing a long series of strikes issued a knockdown in return, after which the second one followed. It was as if the Samoan had his grandmother's pies cooling down in a locker room, and as soon as he remembered about them, the pace of the battle took off at times. In the third round, Moore made another knockdown with a low kick, after which he began to rush, and a long series of repeated falls of Alexander forced the referee to interfere and stop the fight. So in this cool and spectacular fight, Mighty won ahead of time and became the champion of the Grand Prix, which became his second. After that, he received a fight for the K1 heavyweight title, which was held by Sammy Shield, but lost by unanimous decision. The fight with Shields was the starting point for Mighty and after this meeting he lost 4 more times in a row. Further, there were less and less victories and defeats simply poured from all the cracks. Mighty from 2010 to 2018 couldn't win a single bout, losing 11 times in a row, although sometimes he could shake not only the old days but also the brains of his opponents. Oh! 
So during his K1 career, Mighty was able to win 20 fights out of 42, and he mostly lost fights to his main rivals and the tops. But this didn't stop him at all from knocking out the easier guys, and this was the gift that always took attention to his persona. Well, if you want a sequel of Mighty's adventures in MMA, then you know the plan of action. Like the video, write comments, and I will definitely continue. Also, if you are not subscribed, subscribe so as not to miss new videos.